So today, I got some awesome freaking fishing hats for you. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. You're just not gonna believe how awesome these fishing hats are. They are all awesome. Back in February when I was in Kentucky, I recruited me some kids to help me do videos. Let's face it, kids are cheap labor. I might wanna recant that. It's all about delegating, people. It's all about delegating. Anyway, roll the kids. Hack number one. On this hack, you can take a microfiber towel like this one or like this one. They come in all different colors. Or you can take a regular work towel. This is one of those you get in a big pack that's pretty cheap and you just throw them away when you're done with them. And this hack, was sent to me by one of my subscribers and I thought it was pretty cool. It's one of those things where it's so simple, you just feel dumb after you hear it. Well, what you can do is I got one of these grommet kits right here. These kits come with different size grommets. See what I'm saying? And there's a front grommet and there's a back grommet or vice versa, I'm not sure. It comes with two different punches. It has one shaft that you screw it into and it has a base that you can flip over for two different size grommets. It also comes with a cutter and a wood block to use it with. But I found that on these towels, it's better to just use a pair of scissors and make a little slit in it and stick your grommet through it. Well, after you stick your grommet through it, you line it up on the anvil port, put your punch on it and hit it with a hammer. It'll close up your grommet and when you're finished, you put a grommet on your towel where it won't rip off of there. You can take this towel and hang it anywhere on your boat. You can also do the same thing with cheap shop towels. I think I get like 28 of these shop towels for $10 or something like that. But they work really good around the shop. I'm sure they'd work really good for a bait rag. By the way, this hook right here that you use to hang this thing up, you can get these hooks anywhere. And they're really cheap. And as you can see, I've had that catfish towel on my boat for a long time. I also made one of these. I have a little tiny grommet and you can get them in different kits. But for the towels, I kind of like the big ones better. After you're through using these towels on your boat, unhook it, rinse it off in the water, and hang it back up there and let it dry. <laughs> You've probably seen the video where I use a can koozie to keep my leader line in. And it works really good. It keeps your leader line from getting all tangled up and unspooling on your boat. Small disclaimer though, this is actually a real cover. Because I did a video making real covers out of can koozies, I'm just saying. But it's still technically a can koozie and it works really good for leader line. The problem with the can koozie leader line holder is it only works for spools that fit in it. I mean, what if you got a spool this size? It's too big. Or what if your leader line is on a spool like this? Then what you gonna do? Well, I'll show you what you gonna do. I bought some one inch elastic and I got this at Walmart. You could probably find this at the Dollar Tree too or Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever. But you take this one inch elastic. Now you measure the elastic around the spool you're wanting to do and you want to make it a little bit tight to where it has to stretch. You cut your elastic and you can sew this together with just a needle and thread. But something I found that works even better are these little rivets right here. And they actually have two different sides. One side has a little nipple, the other side just has a hole in it. But you can put these two together and just hit them with a hammer and it turns into like a little rivet. I actually used these rivets on the video where I made a knife sheath out of PVC and they worked really good. And I actually got short ones and I got longer ones. But after you get your elastic cut, I cut two little slits in both ends. And then I stick my rivets through them. Once I get my rivets through them, I put them together and all you gotta do is hit them with a hammer. You flatten out the rivets and this thing is connected. Then you can take some grommets, which are just these little things right here. And these small grommets, they come with a pair of pliers that mashes them flat. And these are not my favorite because they're kind of hard to use. You could also use big grommets if you want to, depending on how wide your elastic is. Once you decide which grommet you want to use, you just snip another hole into your elastic on the opposite end of the rivets, stick your grommet in, use your grommet tool to mash it flat. 
Well, when you're finished, you put it on your leader spool and it won't let your line go all over the place. Now something else that's really cool is if you wind it towards the end of the line, it'll pull it all right back in there for you. Did you catch that? You see the end of the line? Wind your elastic towards the end of the line and pulls it back in for you. Is that not awesome? I really like this thing. And I wanted to tell you, I have sewed it and I have used these rivets and I like these rivets much better. And like I said, you can use big grommets or you can use little grommets. It don't really matter cause both of them work. You know what I'm saying? But if you've tried any of my hacks, you ought to try this one because I really like this one. By the way, they do sell these things. I'm not the one that invented this. So if you don't want to make it, you can just buy one, I guess. But why not make it? Because for what one of these costs, you can probably buy the material to make you 20 of them. You know what I'm saying? So I've had this on a hack video before. What this is, is a drill battery connector. This one's made for a Dewalt. And basically you can take any size Dewalt battery and you can plug it right into this thing. Right now, these wires are hot. And these things work really good. I had another hack video to where I ran a green light off of these. But today, I found something even cooler. And just for your information, these cheap ones, this is a cheap one. It's like 10 bucks. They're kind of hard to get on and off of. The ones I used on the last video wasn't quite that hard. But... Anyway, this right here is a black light. You know, the kind of black light that makes stuff glow. Now, this black light is from 12 volt to 24 volt. So that means it'll work perfectly fine with this 20 volt battery. It come with this bracket on it. Bracket mounts in these holes right here. So you can mount it from this side for a low profile, or you can mount from this side for a more tall profile. You know what I'm saying? This is actually upside down, but it will increase your profile if you mount it like this. I've cleaned these wires up, and the first thing we need to do is we're gonna solder these wires together. But before we do that, I've got three pieces of heat shrink tube. I'm gonna put the bigger piece on our light. I'm just gonna slip it on and move it up, and I'm gonna put the two small pieces on our battery mount. I'm going to put one on each wire and slide them back as far as possible so they don't get hot. Next, I'm going to take a soldering iron. I'm going to solder the red to the red, solder the black to the black. And after we get them soldered, we can move our small heat shrink tubes back down and heat shrink them. And then put the big one over the top of both of them to clean them up and heat shrink it. After we got that done, we halfway finished. See what I mean about cleaning it up? That's why I put the big piece of shrink tubing on this side. Two small pieces keep the wires separated the big piece just cleans it up better but anyway we got our light wired up now now we need to bolt our bracket onto our battery holder you see these two holes on the top of it and it's countersunk on the other side well i went to the hardware store and i got some small little bolts some washers and some nuts and obviously we can't have nothing sticking out here or it's going to hit our battery so we're going to have to run it from the inside to the outside. Tell you this thing right here turned out pretty dang cool look at that and it's so clean one of the reasons it's clean is see how i took the wires up and under it when i bolted it in which works really good because now you ain't got nothing hanging out get your wires hung up you know what i'm saying hey let's test this thing out that's kind of cool i see stuff all over the place in here glowing <laughs> that's pretty cool Let's go see what my rods look like. Oh, there ain't no snakes in here. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. I know it's not showing up on camera just how good these rods are glowing, but it's freaking awesome. Even my dang peg floats are glowing. Man, I can see a lot of uses for this. I'll say this, you don't want to shine in your eyes. This thing's bright. So this is a freaking awesome little hack.
and it's really simple. I really like this light, but I wanted to let y'all know that I also found these lights on Amazon, and I think I paid $20 for the two of them, which is really cheap. And I got this idea from something I seen online, and I'm going to leave a link to what I seen online because if you don't want to build your own, then go on there and buy some from them. But there's several different companies using drill batteries to make lights because it's a good idea. Like I said before, I even made my green light with a drill battery and put it on a hack video. But this light here, these two lights right here, they're all 10 watt lights. So they should be the same brightness. And the last thing I wanted to talk about, this drill battery connector right here that you can use to plug into your drill battery. These things right here are really cheap, but they make all different kinds of these. Some of them's not so cheap, some of them's really cheap. I also found some like this, and this might be a little handier. You'll have to strap up your wire somehow, but this one right here comes with the fuse so the fuse can blow if something goes wrong and it comes with the on and off switch so you don't have to keep taking your battery out every time you want to cut it off but overall this is a pretty cool little hack right here there's nothing quite as good as filleting your own fish after a fishing trip. If you're like me, when you try to fillet those little slimy boogers, they slide all over the place. Well, this company come out with a mat. It's made out of silicone that you can fillet fish on, and they say the silicone grips the fish. The only problem with the mat is they're like almost $40 for a piece of silicone. Well, I was at Hobby Lobby one day, and I ran across these silicone mats and I think they were like five dollars a piece now they may have bigger ones I didn't really look you put it on this fillet board and it don't really move the board does though but I thought this would be great for filleting crappy and stuff like that. When you do your initial cutting, it won't be sliding all over the place. Then if you want a smooth surface, you can just move it out of the way. You know what I'm saying? Something else I found was these grip mats. They're flexible cut mats. They're made really tough. It's got a super smooth side, but the cool part is if you flip them over, these things actually have a really good texture to them. It's hard to see, but you can hear it. I think this would probably hold fish good. And I got this whole pack at Walmart and it wasn't that high. It may have been 10 bucks. I'm pretty sure it was 10 bucks. But anyway, that right there is a couple of ideas that you could use for a fillet map and not have to spend $40. Even though I'm sure those $40 flame mats are awesome. And if you want one, you can get those at Bass Pro Shop. I'm pretty sure. Yep, I thought so. <laughs> okay, so I got this pool noodle, right? It's just a regular old small pool noodle. And I'm going to take this thing. And over here, I got my heat gun clamped down with a whole bunch of clamps. Just to hold it still. I'm gonna cut the heat gun on. I'm gonna try to heat both ends at the same time and stick them together and make this thing into a loop. You know what I'm saying? Okay, that was a fail. But, of course, I've got another plan. Okay. So we got our ring. It ain't exactly a ring, but it'll work. So we're gonna take our ring, and I've got a mesh laundry basket right here that I bought at Walmart, and it wasn't very expensive, a couple of bucks. And we're gonna attach our ring to the top of our laundry basket. <laughs> Have y'all 
I figured it out yet. You see what we got here, right? You understand, right? You could use this as a fish live well if you're like bank fishing or something. But the real reason that I made this cause me and one of my buddies He's been on videos before. We was talking about catching shad. And basically, when you catch shad with a cast net, you stress them out. Well, when you put them in your bait tank, the shad throw up and they run the water. And then it'll end up killing them if you don't change it. Well, we was talking about making something like this that you could put the shad in, let them throw up, and then pick them up, add the water, and dump them in your bait tank. And your water don't get dirty. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. But like I said, this would make an awesome little bank fishing live well too. I'm just saying. Something else that's cool about this, even though I use PVC on it so it's a little bit rigid, it still doesn't take up much space. And that's pretty cool too. Now, while I was over there getting that mesh laundry basket that only costs a couple bucks, I seen this one. It was a little bit higher, but it pops open, and that's kind of cool. And we're going to look at this thing and see if we could use this for the same thing. This thing is pretty dang big. You might really could use this to clean your shed with. I'm just saying, you put them in here and dip them down in the water and then dump them in your live well. I mean, it could work. You know what I'm saying? Well, them dare fishing hacks right there turned out freaking awesome. Especially that black light. I'm definitely going to be using that black light and the rags and the cutting board. Anyway, if you like this video, then you're probably going to like this video or this video or this video. Because I got a bunch of hack videos. So go over and check them out because this video is over.